Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys three ways that you can put an image inside of the bounds of text inside of GIMP. So before we go ahead and get started, note that I have a visible black background layer, and I also have the image that we're going to be working on for this tutorial. So of course, if you don't already know, the easiest way to bring an image into GIMP is just to drag and drop it into the program, and it should be able to load up as a new layer. Okay, so since we're going to be demonstrating these three different methods, I'm going to hit Control c and Control v to copy and paste the image that we're going to work with three times for three different methods. And we can go ahead and start typing our text with the text tool. So you can find that on the top left in the toolbox. Click on text tool and then click somewhere in the main window in order to start typing. You can use any font you want, but if you want to have really big standout titles, then make sure that the font size is cranked up pretty high. So I'm going to put this at 600. Uh, pixels as the font size and then we can change the color to white. I recommend making it a pure white that's HTML notation 6 F's so that we don't run into any issues later. This will be full color full alpha and then we can go ahead and hit OK. So once you've changed your color to white and set your font size start typing whatever text you want the image to fit inside of. So for this video we'll do forest. And you'll notice I already have two guides set up, a horizontal and a vertical guide. So I can use the move tool in order to snap this to the center of our image. If you want to create the guides yourself, you can go up to image and then guides and do new guide by percent. Uh, put it at vertical 50% and horizontal 50% to get these exact same guides that I have. And once you have that, you should be able to snap to them very easily. So next we're going to want to isolate the text and the image into its own layer group. So you can do that by going to the bottom right. There's a little button here. It looks kind of like a Windows folder. If you click on that, it will create a new layer group. Then you're going to want to take the text and the background image and draw it and then drag those and drop them into the layer group. So I'll take the layer group, I'll hit F2 on the keyboard, and I'll rename this to the effect that we'll do. So, so I will call this the select invert and cut method, and then hit enter just to identify it a little bit better. So this method is pretty straightforward and simple. The idea is we're going to cut away anything in the background image that is not within the bounds of this text that we've created. So to do that, we want to select the area where the text is showing on the screen. So right click on your text layer. Here I have it called forest and then go to alpha to selection. When you do that, you should see a moving dotted line go around the bounds of all of your text characters. But we don't want to cut away the areas inside of that bounds. We want to cut the inverse of that, everything outside the bounds. So to do that, you can hit control I on the keyboard or go up to the select menu and choose invert as the third option. And then we just need to go to the image layer and hit Control X or go up to edit and then cut to cut away all of the current selection. So Control X and now all of that background information is gone. If you'd like, you can hit Control V now to paste that into a new layer in case you need it later on for some reason. So I'll just hit the green button to make that as a new pasted layer and I will hide that visibility for now. So the information exists, but it's not showing. Then what you need to do is to take the text and to hide it. So by hiding the text, now only the modified image will show through and it should have the exact shape as the text we had created. So the disadvantage of this method is that it's rather destructive in the sense that you're probably going to need to re-import the image if you need to make any changes to it because we're literally cutting the data away. So if you're using this method and you ever want to recombine these two images, you can uh, click on the visibility icon for the cutaway pasted layer down here. Right click on the higher layer and then choosing merge down and that will combine it into one single image again. But if you forget to have this pasted layer and you need to make some changes to the original image, you might need to re-import it and that can be a minor disadvantage of this. So next I'm going to control C on the force text layer, control V to paste another copy of it. And we'll just move that outside of the layer group, hide the layer group, and we can start working on the next method. And actually, I'll duplicate this layer one more time since we need to do two more. So control C and then control V to paste another copy of the layer. And now we can create a new layer group for the mask method. So let's go ahead and hit create new layer group. And I'm going to rename this mask method. And I'll drag one copy of the force text 
and one copy of the image that we're working on into the layer group. So next, just make sure you enable the visibility of that image so that we can work with it. So in order to create a mask, we're going to need to right click on the image inside of our layer group and then go to add layer mask. When you get this little window, you should initialize it as black with full transparency, which will initially make the image completely invisible. A black layer mask allows nothing through. So because our text is white, if we copy that over to the layer mask, it will allow 100% of the image to show through for the areas where the text shape is located, um, which is one of the reasons we made it white earlier. So next you can click on your text layer, hit Control C in order to copy the information, then left click on the layer mask. Note that when you add the layer mask in, there's now two things to click on, the image and then the layer mask. So make sure it's the one on the right that's currently black, and then hit Control V in order to paste in the copy of our text. Now initially it's going to be this floating selection, so you need to click on the create new layer and add it to the image button. So when you have the layer mask area selected, hit control V and it's going to paste the text in as a floating selection. So in order for that to actually become the layer mask, uh, what you can do is just click on the rectangular select up here in the toolbox and then click somewhere random on the image, just left click and that should finalize copying the information into the layer mask. So now if we hide the text layer, the layer mask should show through. So now in order to add a layer mask in for our image here, we're going to need to right click on its layer, go to add layer mask. You should initialize it as black with full transparency. So uh, whenever you're dealing with layer masks, the color black means that it will show nothing. It has full transparency and basically makes it invisible. So now we need to copy the data over from the force text into this layer mask. So left click on the text layer, hit controls, hit control C in order to copy it. Then left click on the layer mask. That is the little thumbnail over to the right, not the image, but the black area. And then hit control V in order to paste it in. It'll initially appear as a floating selection. So how you can finalize pasting that in is you can just click on the rectangle select in the toolbox or R on your keyboard and then just left click once anywhere in your image window. And that should finalize copying the information over to the layer mask. So you should see the text kind of pop up here in white. And if you hide the original text layer now, you should now be able to see the image, but only the parts that are within that layer mask. So next up for the last method, and perhaps one of the more flexible ones, is to use composite modes. So let's go ahead and hide the mask method, and we'll take our remaining copy of the image and the text and put that in its own layer group. So I'm going to click on the layer group button one more time. I'm going to F2 to rename it and we'll say composite mode method. Drag the text layer in and then drag the image layer in. Make sure that the text layer is above the image layer. Uh, the way that composite modes interact is that they apply to any layer below it in the hierarchy. So next, there's this section here above the layer hierarchy called mode, and we can change that to a myriad of uh, different composite modes, which will change how this layer, the text layer, uh, applies on top of the bottom image layer. So if you click on the dropdown, you'll see that there's a lot of options here. Uh, one that I think works really well for this kind of thing would be overlay. So when you do that, the white information from the text layer kind of layers on top of the underlying layer, basically brightening up everything underneath it in a way that you can clearly see the shape of the text. So from the composite mode dropdown, there's a lot of other options you can use as well. So not just overlay, but you could try something like a difference if you want it to really contrast with the original background image. Let's see, I think any of these ones in the light category should work. So if you do something like hard mix or soft light, you'll get a different result than the overlay method. Um, you can also come down here to these at the bottom. So something like LCH lightness could be interesting. So some of the others at the bottom, um, like luminance, may work pretty well. And if you find that the effect that's layering on top of that uh, bottom image is a little too strong, what you can do is actually lower the opacity of the text layer. And what that'll do is make it partially transparent, in a sense, lowering the amount of that effect that actually shows on top of your bottom image. So you can make it a lot more subtle. And you can just use the middle mouse wheel if you want to scroll through these and see if one works particularly well. 
Subtract actually looks pretty sweet there if you happen to lower the opacity below 100%. So you can see with 100% opacity, it doesn't really give you the same look at all. But um, if you just subtract a little bit of the information there, uh, you can get a really cool effect. So that pretty much covers three of the main ways that you can put an image inside of text inside of GIMP. I hope you guys found this tutorial to be helpful. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys inside of my future video content.